Hi everyone, the Lord bless you. Welcome to Kingdom Upgrades YouTube channel. I am your ambassador, Dylan Vogt. Like and subscribe to this channel to hear and know more of our content. This content, we are here to look at some comparison with relation to what had happened in Noah's day and what is actually happening presently. We need to pay attention. Matthew 24, 37 declares, For as the coming of the Son of Man, that is the Messiah, will be just like the days of Noah. And there is a lot to pay attention to because it's, there is a lot of comparison and the similarities of things that are happening. So let's go to Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to read a few verses here. Genesis chapter 6 from verse 1. Now it happened when men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and desirable and they took wives for themselves whomever they chose and desired. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive and remain with man forever because he is indeed flesh sinful corrupt and given over to sensual appetites nevertheless his days shall yet be a hundred and twenty years let's go to verse six verse sorry verse five the lord saw that the wickedness Deprived of man was great on the earth, and the privacy, sorry, the privacy of man was great on the earth, and that every imagination or intent of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. The Lord regretted that he had made mankind on the earth, and he was deeply grieved in his heart. So as the Lord said, I will destroy mankind whom I have created from the surface of the earth. Not only man, but the animals and the crawling things and the birds of the air, because it deeply grieved me to see mankind's sin. sin. And I regretted that I have made them, but Noah found favor and grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 9, these are the records of the generation of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, one who was just and had right standing with God. Blameless in his evil generation, meaning the time that he lived in, it was evil. But he was still blameless in his generation. Noah walked <laughs> and lived in habitual fellowship with God. Pay attention. Noah walked and lived in habitual fellowship with God. Now Noah became the father of three sons, Shem, Hem, and Japhat. And the population of the earth was corrupt. Absolutely deprived, spiritually and moral corrupt in God's sight. And the land was filled with violence, desecration, infringement outrage assault and lust for power <laughs> lust for power my good god god looked on the earth and saw how debased and degenerate it was for all humanity had corrupt their way on the earth and lost their true direction <laughs> god said to know i intend to make an end of all that lives all that lives for true men the land is full filled with violence and behold i am about to destroy them together with the land make yourself an ark of grass graffo wood make in it room rooms and coat it inside and outside with pitch here we see in this story here the day that Noah lived in and the time Noah lived in was considered evil. It was an evil and a corrupt generation, right? 
But Noah found favor with God. Noah habitually lived and walked in fellowship with God. It didn't matter what was happening. Noah habitually fellowship with God. He lived, he walked, and he fellowship with God. His walk was one that was of fellowship with the Lord. So Noah found favor with God. So because Noah found favor with God, God chose to reveal his heart and his plan to Noah. What he had intended to do. Right? It is similar with um, Abraham when God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He shared it with Abraham. So he shared it with Noah and he told Noah what he will do. Because he is grieved. Come on. And it grieved his heart to see the sins of mankind. And he said he's going to destroy everything. But the reality is what God had said in Genesis that he would not destroy the earth again by way of flood. That's why we have the rainbow. Because he would not destroy the earth again by way of flood. But God is grieved in this very hour as well. That is why all this happened is happening. Because we have to realize that the word of God will not return void but will accomplish what he with us, what he pleases at his, as he sent it forth. So whatever the word, when the word go forth, whatever manifests is based on what God pleases. Let me explain this. Yes, based on what God pleases. So his word went forth. So based on what please him would cause a manifestation of his word. So if he is displeased and based on what is happening, this judgment if he is pleased, we will see righteousness will, righteousness will prevail, life will prevail, victory will prevail, health, happiness, prosperity, and everything. But he is grieved. Okay, he is grieved. So the Lord instructed Noah to build an ark. And in today's day, the ark here, an ark literally represents... Is considered a place of safety okay an ark is considered safe a place of safety a place of protection or, or security a place of refuge and also an ark is called a covenant an ark of the covenant a covenant because in with today's excuse me generation the ark is a place of safety Based on the covenant, because the ark of an is an ark of an, a covenant or the ark of covenant, an agree an agreement of safety and protection. Okay. <clears throat> Hear what God said to Noah in Genesis six seventeen and eighteen. For behold, I even I will bring a flood of waters on the earth. To destroy all life under the heavens in which there is the breath and spirit of life everything that is on the land shall die but i will establish my covenant my solemn promise okay formal agreement with you and you shall come into the ark you and your three sons your wife and your son's wives with you so the ark of the covenant the ark of the covenant god would have established a covenant with noah's will okay so the ark represent a covenant a place of safety god established a covenant with noah and he prepared a place of safety for him because of the covenant god is a covenant keeping god and god is committed to his covenant likewise today our act is a place of safety in god okay a place of refuge a place of security in god a place where we'll be protected and that is based on the establishment of the covenant agreement okay of protection for our lives so God said to Noah here that the flood will come, but I have established a covenant with you. And because I have established a covenant with you, 
definitely I have to see to it that I have a place of safety and a place of refuge to protect you because I am in covenant relationship with you. Come on. It is the very thing with us today. So the cover is speaking here now. The ark God is establishing in this hour for us is the covenant of safety. It is the covenant of safety. God is a covenant keeping God. This he said to Noah in verse 18, but I will establish my covenant, my solemn promise, formal agreement with you. And you shall come into the ark, you and your family, your three sons and your wife and your son's wives with you listen to this establish when god is going to establish he means he's going to institute build the institution instituting of a covenant mean a place of protection i want to institute it i want it to be made known i want it to be to be evident i instituted he's going to build it or bring it into being or on a form of stable basis so he's going to bring it into being, bring it into manifestation on a form or a stable basis. Meaning it's going to be established. It's going to be a stable base, a place of stability to in, and install or settle in a position or a position place. It's going to be installed and it's going to be settled in position to show to be valid or true and to be proved. To show mean it is going to be established and seen, be made evident, visible to the eyes, to the public, to all, that it is valid or and it is true and it is proven, it is approved or it is proved by him. To be accepted or recognized, mean it will be visible and it will be accepted and recognized by all, by the eyes of all, all will see. And be, it will be made noticeable. And it, he intend to bring it about, bring it, bring it out and make it permanent. That it will be, come about and be made permanent. Bring, bring it about permanently. What he's going to do is going to bring it about and make it permanent. It will be permanent. It's a no temporary thing. This is permanent he's speaking of. Are you in the ark? Come on, let's speak. Are you in the ark of the Lord? Are you in the safe place? Not a safe place, the safe place because there is one safe place in God. Are you in the safe place? Question to consider. If not get in before it's too late. We all know of the situation that while Noah for those who know the story, if you have never read the story, you don't know of the story, you can go to Genesis chapter 6 and read the story. Genesis 6, 7, and 9, 8 and 9, you can read the story. You will see that, we all will see and understand here that while Noah was building the ark, <laughs> people mocked Noah. People laughed Noah because in that day rain, they never had rain. So he's building a boat on a dry land. And they mocked him, laughed him. What are you doing going to do with a boat on a dry land? They never had rain. But Noah was following the instructions of the Lord. He was obeying the instructions of the Lord because the Lord gave them an assignment to carry out. And he obeyed the assignment. Had Noah not obeyed the assignment, Noah and his family also would have been drowned. So Noah obeyed the Lord because the Lord even instructed him to tar in the boat. That is securing the, the crease that it would, the water would not seep in. So if we pay attention here and we continue to read the story, we're going to see that when the ark would have been completed, even the animals came to the ark two by two. And came into the ark. Why? Because it was God who was in control. He was working everything out. Noah was just obeying and carrying out the instructions. Because God would have established a covenant with Noah. So Noah built the ark. And the persons mocked at him. They laughed at him and everything. 
But at the end of the day, it was only Noah and his family who entered the ark. Why? Because the other persons, they made it a matter of laughter. And it was funny to them. But Noah had received a vision from God. And Noah was the head of the family. He was a, the man, the husband. Noah was a family and he built the ark. He gave instructions. His family obeyed and they followed all the instructions. So they all were in a safe place. So God gave Noah the instructions because he was a head. And he carried out the instruction. And they all obeyed him. So at the end of the day, it was Noah and his family and the animals alone that entered the ark. They laughed, no, they mocked Noah. But Noah alone entered the ark because it was too late. And today we are seeing the same thing here. Where God, the, the, the earth is filled with immorality and the sins and even lust for power. <laughs> lust for power desecration the very things we're seeing here okay the deprived of spiritual morality okay persons are marrying as they feel they're just marrying to whoever whenever and they marry them. a lot of divorce just like all their marriages there are a lot of divorces because Persons are just marrying based on beauty. It's a very thing that's happening. Let me go back here and just read it quickly to refresh us. <laughs> From verse, I'm going to read verse 1, two, verse one and 2 just to refresh us. It's in the word. Now it happened when men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw so that the daughters of men were beautiful and desirable see beautiful and desirable the lust of the eye the pride of life okay they were desirable based on how they look they're desirable and they look and they sorry and they took wives for themselves whomever they chose and desired then the lord said my spirit shall not strive and remain with man forever because he is indeed flesh sinful corrupt and given over to sensual appetites nevertheless his days shall yet be a hundred and twenty years so here we see here that hey <laughs> lord help us enlighten the eyes of your people understanding we're seeing here that it is a very thing Persons are marrying, they cho they're choosing based on the desire, how they look, what things look, look nice. And, you know, and God saw the corruption in it. And he said, a spirit shall not strive, would not wrestle with men always, you know, because of their sinful and their corrupt. And they're given over to sensual appetites. So the sensual desires, the appetite growing larger. And this is what is happening today. Sensual appetite is growing larger today, you know. So it's the very thing we hear. The similarities, okay. And the word of God declares that. Just as it was. In like the day of Noah. For the coming of the son of man. The Messiah will be just like the days of Noah. So the very things are happening. So get into the place of safety. Get in God. The only safe place. Because everything that is going to happen is going to happen suddenly. We're seeing so much happening, but persons are still very passive. You know, very passive. Watch the war. Everything, everything is happening. You know, I was looking at, I live not very far from a place they call Rasville that does have like these big sport and these parties. And I was looking on last night, they had a session there. The amount of persons, young people, I was like, God. 
Save these souls. If you see young people, if you see people, if you see vehicles, the street full, if you see this place, how much persons were just going in droves. It's like, this is the time and the day of Noah. You know, and the Lord was just ministering to me as I was there looking from the veranda, you know, and I was, God have mercy. Everybody's just going on the sport and the everything and like flowing. Are you in the place of safety? Are you in the place of the ark? Are you in safety? If not, get in. This will all happen suddenly. We're having enough evidence. There's enough to pay attention to. The Lord bless you. Shalom.